Hi everyone, today we are talking about how to interpret quartiles. You do not need to write down everything we'll cover in this video, but be sure to jot down important information and at least one example of each type of problem that we'll cover. Also remember that you can pause the video to jot down important notes, rewind to view information again, and fast forward if you think you got it. But don't fast forward so much that you miss out on something important. So for interpreting quartiles, they're basically going to be giving us box plots and we're going to have to understand what or be able to explain what each quartile is actually talking to us about. So what's important for you to remember is that each quartile is made up of 25% of the data. So if you don't have this in your notes, be sure that you have it in there now. And we're going to utilize this in our examples. Okay, here is an example of an interpreting quartiles question. It says that the five number summary for the number of band members by high school in Orange County is shown in the following table. So they collected all this data of the um, band members, high school band members in Orange County. And they found that the minimum was 80 band members, the maximum was 130, Quartile 1 was 90, median was 105, and quartile 3 was 115. So remember that each of those quartiles, like what we shown below, or shown before, uh, gives us 25%. So I'm just going to recopy that down. Quartile 1, median, quartile 3, each of those is 25%. These are all percents. And then the inner quartile range, I'm going to put in red here, is quartile 3 to quartile 1, that subtraction. So they want to know what percent of high schools in Orange County have more than 130 band members. 130 is the maximum already. So what percent have more than 130 band members? You should have answered that it's 0% because 130 is as high as it got and everything beyond that is already 100%. So what's beyond 100%? I know a lot of times people say it, someone gave their 150%, but those aren't really percents that we can use in this problem because it's either they interviewed all the people that are in the survey or not. So there's not a hundred and plus percent in this problem. None, no percent, zero percent of high schools in this study have more than 130 band members because we already covered the hundred percent there. Okay. So you're really utilizing your knowledge of the quartiles and their percents. Let's take a look at this one. Here they want to know the five number summary suggests that about 25% of Carl Carlson High School teachers have fewer than how many years of experience. So go ahead and pause the video and try it on your own first. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is kind of make myself that box. Each of these in between is 25%. And they want to know about 25% of Carlson High School teachers have fewer, less, fewer is less, fewer than how many years of experience. So if we're doing less, then we want to go towards the, the front end of this. 25%, that's the first 25%. 25%, about 25% of Carlson High School teachers have fewer than five years of experience. If you said two, that's the smallest amount. There's none that have less than two years. Everybody has at least two years of experience. 
If you say eight, that's 50% have less because beyond eight in the left-hand direction is 50%. If you say 11, it's 75% that have less than 11. And if you say 16, 100% uh, have less than 16, so it's five. One more. This question is asking how, about how, about what percent of lakes in Minnesota have fewer than 23 houseboats? So pause the video and try that one. Okay, again, I want to write out what my percents are. Each of these sections is 25%. So what about what percent have fewer, that's less than, 23 houseboats? About what percent have less? That would be 50%, these two together, about 50%. So this is kind of why we use quartiles, because we can get a little bit more information about how the data that we collected is acting, and we can really come up with some good conclusions. Obviously with the median we can figure out the upper half and the lower half, but by dividing it into even more sections we can figure out those percents. Because of course if we divide it into even more sections we can figure out even more um, information. But 25% is usually where people stop because that's a pretty good number already. Specific but not too specific. Let's do one last one. The box plot suggests that about 25% of quarterbacks in the boys football league threw fewer than what number of touchdowns? Pause the video and try it on your own. Okay, they want to look for a 25% that's fewer than what number of touchdowns? I already know I'm going to look at this first section. Fewer than seven. All of these are 25% and it's fewer. Again, if I chose 10, it would be 50%. If I chose 15, it would be 75%. So too many percents. This is seven, seven touchdowns. Okay, so the trick is dividing your information into the correct sections. It's a little trickier when they don't give you the box plot. So if you notice, it's much easier to see different sections in your box plot. Well, if you have just a data set, it's a little harder. So they're really helping you out when you give you the box plot. Let me know if you have any questions as you work on these problems, and I'll see you in class.